Online? Online? Where's the lag? Come on. Oh, good. There we go. It should be starting. Hello to anybody who's here. I'm sure people will be here. Let's get my up what I'm working on. I want to, while I'm waiting for people, I'm going to try to quickly whip together some credits here. Uh, the Since I finally got enough voice back, well, <coughs> not this moment, but last night, takes a while during the day for it to wake up, and I wake up late in the day. It's easier to record late at night than it is, I mean, to do serious recording late at night rather than uh, throughout the day, simply because of traffic. There's a huge difference between a, a good-sounding studio and a soundproofed studio. And so uh, soundproofing takes significantly more expense and effort, and therefore it's much easier to have a studio... Oh, hello, David. A, a studio where the sound is decent, but it's not soundproofed. Mm. Which is why I tend to record in the middle of the night when I'm doing my serious audiobook recordings. I need to get back on those now that my voice is back. It's so hard. That's one of the worst parts of having a cold. Is that... In episode... Is that, um... As an audiobook narrator, I mean, that pretty much just cuts off everything. In episode two of the TV... I am, are you? You heard... Are you feeling better, Beverly too? Poole as Jane... Gareth Bowley as Gerald, and Julie Hoverson as Annie. Fiona Thrale was Gerald's wife. Okay, I'm going to show you a trick here. This is not something I advocate, but it is something I do when I'm editing audiobooks. I want to take out all my breaths, and I don't want to have to do them all manually, especially when I've got hours and hours of track. This is, like I said, this is a, a, a bad trick that one should only do if one practices it enough because the problem is what I'm gonna do I've made a backup track here that matches this one they're identical now what I'm gonna do is um, you see all these little noises the breaths and things we can see them in both tracks now I'm going to do a noise gate and a noise gate and I run it really high uh, a really high noise gate. So what it's going to do is anything below 34. Oh, hello, Haddock. <coughs> no, it wasn't that early. I just started on the dot, so to speak. I'm showing a terrible, terrible trick that I don't advocate anyone using, but I use. It's one of those, like, you know, flying without a net things. Um, let me start it over again. What I did, this is my credits track for two and three, this part that's going to be different. I have duplicated the track, so I've got it uh, twice. Now in the main one, I'm going to run a noise gate. And see now, a lot of times when people are editing and they have to take out a lot of breaths, they'll run a noise gate, but they'll do it wrong. And this is what I'm, this is the right way to do it, sort of. Part of it is you have to have totally clean background sound first, which I've got. I mean, or at least as close as matters. Um, if you don't, then what you'll have is the background sound under your voice and then cutting out between words, which sounds worse than just being there all the time, as I've said many times. But what I'm doing is anything that's below 34 in volume is going to be reduced by 50. And what that means is that it's going to take out all the breaths and things, okay? But it's also likely to take out some stuff I want. And that's the problem with running a noise gate, is that the ends of words, especially th or th or p or t, have a tendency to be in that range and go away. So, but I'm going to run it. And now... And you see how these vanished because they went away. And part of this went away, which is... His wife. 
Now, part of the F is still there, but you can see that it's longer in the original track. <coughs> now, the problem often is, and you have to have your maiden volume up enough so that the majority of all of your words are above the level that you're taking out, obviously. And there's still going to be stuff like this one that's still just a little too loud and just miss the cutoff for it. But it does take out, I mean, especially when I'm doing audiobooks and I'm, and I've got tracks that are like an hour long and I don't want to have to sit there and edit every breath manually. I have to get it to the volume I want, then copy it and run that. And the reason I copy it is because if you ever listen to audiobooks that have been well, I mean, poorly edited, frankly, and you hear that the ends of words are cut off, it generally means that they ran a noise gate to get rid of the breath and they didn't bother to to fix anything. You know, if if, if the, you know, like the, the p or t or f or whatever on words either is really, really low or just gone. So this is why I have the duplicate track. Say if I had wiped out all of the f, I would just copy it from here and paste it right back. So I have, as I edit, I listen and I follow along and I make sure that these stay exactly the same so that I can constantly copy back any lost little bits. It's still faster than editing out all the breaths, generally, oddly enough, depending on how carefully I go. It's a very In, rough... It's a very rough process, and it's not one that I actually advocate for most people because most people are just don't want to take the extra step, but it still makes it a significantly better end product than just running a noise gate or something. Now, <coughs> now at the moment, you'll notice I have the gain down. That's just so I could In talk. In episode if it's, two of the If it's Teeth running, Within, it's not going to be like overwhelmingly ex as uh, Jane. loud. Gareth Bowley as Gerald. And Julie Hoverson as Annie. Fiona Thrale was Gerald's wife. Russell Gold was Tompkins, Gerald's valet. Fenella the mystery woman was Jackie Duckworth. The professor was... Now here's another one. The th is gone. Now keep in mind that as long as these two tracks remain identical, this can just paste right on this and there should not be any kind of weird noise because it is exactly what was up there before. Jackie Duckworth. The professor was Robert Cudmore, Miss White was Megan Lane, and Mr. Brown the salesman was Pete Nuts. William King was the ill-fated Lord Bimberton, and Jack Kincaid was Lakes, his very close shave. Also heard... I'm going to take that little bit out still because that sounds wrong. Also heard were Russell Gold and Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard. Much thanks to Quizzical Haddock, the Robins 41406, Guardians of... Guardian of... I can read. Guard, Guardian of Memories and Intrepid Peach for their participation in the live stream that allowed this episode to become a reality. In episode three of The Teeth Within, you heard Beverly Poole as Jane, Gareth Bowley as Gerald, and Julie Hoverson as Annie. Fiona Thrale was G Fiona Thrale was Gerald's wife. Miss White was Megan Lane. Mr. Brown the salesman was Pete Lutz. Naughty Boy Daniel was Benjamin Lind, and Bad Girl Carlotta was Tanya Miloyevic. Also heard were Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard and Jackie Duckworth. Which was wrong. Also heard were Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard, Will Watt, and Jackie Duck. I don't like that hesitation, so let's see. Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard and... Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard, Will Watt, and Jackie Duckworth. <laughs> Much thanks to Quizzical Haddock, The Robins 41406, Guardian of Memories, Intrepid Peach, and Yagion for their participation in the live stream that made this show possible. Okay, 
So that gives me my credit tracks for two and three. And I'll go ahead and put them into my credits file here. Uh, In episode. Okay. And then I've got them as soon as I've got the voices and finish everything else off. So, uh, that will be ready to go whenever I get to the professor's voice. I know. He's supposed to record it tomorrow. He just, it's, he's only got limited recording time, so. And I didn't realize that when I asked him to record, that it would be an issue. All right, so what we've got, I'm going to go ahead and, Close up. This was episode three. Here's our episode four so far. I can get rid of a lot of these extra sounds. Uh, we're going to save the T. Well, no, the T is now in the main FX file somewhere. I don't have to keep it open. And, and this credit file is now. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, I might as well save it in here somewhere. Why does it not just give me there? Music credits. Oh, yeah. All right. So we are on to scene four. Oh, come on. Back to where we were, silly machine. Episode four. Scene four. Ah, yes. So now, what we've got here. Now again, I've cleaned all the lines ahead of time so that I, I that was one of the advantages of starting fresh with breaking up the voices was to have the opportunity to clean all the lines. And, and this is really happening out of order now that I'm seriously pondering it. I'm like, maybe I will move this one down a bit or something. Huh. I might swap this later on with a different scene. The reason why is simply because, I mean, looking at the progression of scenes in this episode, they're not taking place in proper order of time, and I'm not quite happy with that. Because this, for instance, is a T where, um, where uh, Gerald's wife is talking to a friend. It sort of wraps up her story for the moment. And, and what we've just come from is the middle of the night <laughs> with both the police and with the Gerald and Jane story. And I'm like, hmm, that's not quite right. But there is a scene later that I might be able to swap it with. We'll, we'll see how it flows when we get all the scenes done. And this is another thing where, as the writer and producer, I can make these choices. I mean, I would probably do it as the producer anyway, but I would check with the writer first just so that they didn't come in later and freak out on me. Um, simply because, you know, there are times when it doesn't quite make sense and it doesn't flow. And there are times when you do that on purpose because you're doing it for dramatic impact or something. But this doesn't, I was, I was, I was trying to figure out if I did it for a reason and it really hasn't. It's just to wrap up her story and it doesn't have to happen at this point in this episode, but we're going to put the scene together. And then later on when we're listening to the whole episode together, I think, it'll end up getting shifted to a different position in the storyline. And I mean, it's, I don't want to put it in, move it to a different episode because it does need to happen sometime around now, but at the same time, you know what I mean? 
it's just one of those weird timing issues. So let's see where we start with, whoops, let me get back to there. I am so pleased you were. Wow, okay. Lines 10 and. How did I get, wait. That sounds kind of dreadful. Let's see here. Perfect little angels. I know I've used her lines before and it never sounded quite that loud or terrible. Hold on. Um, let me import her line again just so I can see if it's originally that bad or if I screwed it up somewhere. I, you know, I know that I am not 100% perfect all the time and I can screw things up, especially while I'm... <laughs> Talking okay while, again, Julie. When especially while I'm talking when I'm doing things, but line thirteen. There is a good deal of noise in her track. I'm gonna try and clean it up again and try to do it a little bit better. Let's see here. <coughs> it may not work, but let's see if I can make it work. Uh first things first. I'm gonna split it and see if either side has less noise. Lines 10. Lines 10. No, it sounds like either side has the same amount of noise. Okay, next part is we try to get enough of a sample. Now the question is, do I want to do... Let me listen here. Perfect little angels growing so fast. See, the problem is, even with her voice, it already sounds a little bit high past. I mean, honestly, this is a track that I would probably just dump because of the amount of sound in it, uh, just because it's kind of awful. Uh, rather than, but I don't want to replace another voice just now, especially a character who shows up one scene. I can deal with one scene with this, and um, but I need to really take a chance on cleaning this. Cause see now we're gonna I'm gonna leave this top track as is, so that no matter what I can go back to the original, and. If I clean this one at a regular high pass, my, my regular number is 300. Um, it starts to sound like this. Perfect little angels. I mean, she, she, sounds, she sounds more and more uh, farther away, sort of, is what you'd think of it, as opposed to... Perfect little angel. I mean, no matter what, she's got a bit of a tinny sound to her, so... So if I go even higher with the high pass to get rid of more of the background noise. Perfect little angels. She sounds even more. Hello, guardian of memories. I might still be able to run it at that level. Sometimes you're at, you got a trial and error a little bit. I think I'm going to stick with this one, the 400. I think I am it... so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. And... Oh yes, this is where we find out Gerald's wife's name. So the next step is to try to get myself a good sample. A clean sample of sound. And now here, there's not a lot of space here to, to, to choose from. But I'll get as much as I can from the entire track. Because the sound is really very, very overbearing in here. And there isn't much I can do. I mean, I can put music in the scene a little bit. I can put something in there. But at the same time, it's like it is very damaged sound no matter what. So I'm going to have to overcompensate for it a lot. On the other hand, it's good practice if you're doing... Uh, doing 
audio dramas with a lot of volunteers because a lot of times you get very damaged sound <laughs> and you have to kind of work with it or you have to choose to you know I'm see I'm terrible I don't like being mean I don't like being like I'm sorry I really can't use this this sounds like you recorded it on a phone while you were standing on a busy street I mean I'll, there's times when I can but you know it's just it's always so hard because people really want to be part of the show and I'm just not good at being mean probably why it's I'm not a good business person <laughs> And I am literally going to take every speck of sound I can in this entire track, probably, and just try to use every bit of it. Part of it is also that she recorded so low, so the volume of her voice up against the volume of the background noise is not a, it's not a good balance. The, the louder the voice next to background noise, the better chance you have of getting it cleaned out, you know? Uh, that's, well, let's keep that last bit. It's just, unfortunately, there's not a lot of room to wiggle here. So I've got that, and I'm going to duplicate it, and then I'm going to volume one track up. Okay, we've got some space here clear that right out. Take that. Take that. And just take out any of the larger areas, because we do have quite a lot to choose from, as it turns out. It could have been much worse. Um, or it could have been, another way it could have been worse is if they had cleaned out the sound from between the lines using something like a noise gate like I was talking about before where it would be blank, literally blank between the lines and therefore not do me any good to use as a sample. And that's the trick is you, you want to have the noise between the lines if you have to clean the lines. Because without the noise, you can't tell the computer what to clean. I'm just going to do... I just did a high pass filter just so that I could sort of tighten it up a little bit and see where the last few bad bits were. Because nothing you do to the exemplary track, to the, to the pattern, to the... Um, what do I think of this as? As a pattern sort of that I'm following. This track is absolutely negligible. You can do anything to it. You just can't do anything to this track. The one that you're turning into your, your sample. The one you're turning into your noise sample. Okay, so I've got a good long noise sample here that's pretty consistent. I'm going to try and hope. See, and one reason I haven't volumed this up yet is I'm, I'm trying to get the noise sample right on its original level and clean it out and let's see if we can do that i may have to do it again after voluming up some perfect little angels see now we're still very hollow and i can still hear a little bit of the noise but that's done a certain amount of cleaning now this i believe is just uh, and i the gentleman who was recording her, so I'm going to cut that off both ends because that's uh, a different volume and I can volume this up more properly without him there. Okay, and I'm going to do my little pop mute. <coughs> now. Page four. See, I can still hear so much seven. of the machines. I am so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. See, now the question is, do I try to find a second noise sample? I mean, if I ran the first one again, let's see how that goes. 
I am so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. I am so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. Now that's done something. I mean, that's that's reduced it quite a lot. Now, we're stuck with this very hollow, high sound that she's got. It's sort of a brittle sound. I, I don't have... <coughs> pardon me, the right... Sometimes the right terminology for it, I'm sure, but... But I think you can hear it. Especially if I were to put that up against... Um, I am so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. I mean, you hear how hollow that is when compared, for instance, to her lines. It's so kind of you to have me, Frederica. See, and she's not perfect either. Remember how much trickery I had to do to... Yeah, that's probably her script. Um, and that's not going to necessarily... I, that's one of the things I have to work around. I mean, and her sound... Hermione's sound isn't perfect either. She's still got that a slightly hollow sound as well, which kind of helps in a way. But I'm going to take, I'm going to run a low pass filter. My standard, well, for low pass, uh, hello, bunny, what are you doing? I'm trying to get up? Come on. Um, a higher low pass does less damage, so I'm going to take the highest you can go is 5,000. I would normally do 4,000 just to take an edge off, but let's see what 3,000 does. I am so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. No, I don't think that's going to work. I am so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. It's not too bad, though. Yes, hello, bunny. Everybody says hi to you, silly girl. I still got to get some photos. I was looking at my, um, I finally got my first scene-ish of my game to run. Figured out what my problem was that I'm working with the, the RenP, RenPy program. But, uh, then I realized all my pictures are the wrong size. So I've got to go resize all my pictures. I mean, they're just temporary pictures anyway, just placeholders. And I like some of the stuff I did, but I've also got to look at delay times. Anyway, <laughs> not as important right now as... I am so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. And then if I run the, the back... Blah, 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 do the low-pass filter again. I am so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. See, it takes off a little bit of the sharpness. Was that the right thing? Yeah, redo low-pass filter. I might just... <laughs> Run the 4,000 and see what happens. I am so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. It's not quite I'm as so bad. <coughs> oh, bunny. <coughs> the coughing's mostly gone. I'm just, uh... My, my throat and sinuses are waking up at this time of day, and they don't like it. Um... Okay, we're just going to have to work with this. I think that's going to be as best as I can get. And sometimes best as you can get is all you've got to work with. So, I'm going to paste it back into this track. One reason when I'm pasting a same thing into a place, you'll see me delete it first and then paste it, is because there have been times when I have done a paste but have failed to paste or something, and I didn't realize it because it was the same thing and had to back up a lot. So I always delete it first so I can see the old one is gone. It's just a bad habit. I mean, it's just a, a compensating habit, as many things are. Um, I'm going to save this. Uh, I need to put all the voices into a folder. Oh. That way, if I need to come back to this for any reason, I've got it. No reason to do all that work and then just chuck it. 
Now, right off the bat, I think I'm going to give them some background noise just to make it easier to listen to them as I work on them. And we might just make this, I mean, she says T, which would make it more or less afternoon. T is, you know, four o'clock or in the afternoon, isn't it? And, um, uh, and that makes it so, I mean, it makes it awkward for it to be contrasted with a scene in the middle of the night, which is part of what I need to think about with, uh, moving things around a little bit, but come here, come here. I could use my tea pouring again, but, um, what I really need, therefore, is uh, we'll make this a four four. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna because I can't even just do it with a bird or a clock. There's too much noise for that. I mean, I'm sitting here going through all the things. I could do a fireplace, but we've had a lot of fireplaces, so I think I'm going to give her an open window. And an open window is is good and bad. I mean, what it is, I, it's under ambience, so you've got, you know, something outdoors. Um, I can't use anything that's got modern car noises or anything in it, so I've got to pick something completely I think this is the one I usually use yeah it sounds good I mean it's gonna have to be something that sounds literally like it's out in the country which isn't necessarily bad because you could be you know partly out in the country it depends on where she went for tea but um I'm also going to take the, uh, not that one, Old City Street, come here, no, it's the City Street light, uh, I'm also going to use the, um, well, I'll go find it then. Saying that the in, in I'm going to add to this, you know, bird track basically, the um, background track of from the city that we've got, open file uh, that we've been using, you know, but but in the distance, so it's clear that uh, my 19th century England one, so it's clear that that is you know, way in the background that there's a large yard or something breaking up the distance, breaking up the space between there and the house. And that way it's, it doesn't sound like she's, you know, gone to visit a friend who like lives right on the street because it would be an estate. I mean, these are, these are posh, rich, snooty ladies. They've got space around them. So I'm going to, do that, and I'm going to take this volume way down. Uh, maybe not that far. So that what you're hearing is this. Uh, I'm going to make this track mono so that I can put it far away. And actually, I'm going to be making this track mono as well, because really what I'm doing is I'm going to put the window on one side of the room. You know, if it was all around them, then they'd be outside having tea, but having it on one side of the room, and I'm going to get rid of that first bird part. There.
Yeah, so you can hear stuff in the distance, but the birds and the outdoor noises are definitely closer. And the reason for that, putting it on one side lets me offset. And it, it, you know, it's windows on one side of the room, obviously, but it, it helps offset. And as I've said before, when you paste, these all revert to center, which is why I always try, if I'm doing something that I, I need to be able to paste a couple times, I always try to make sure to even it out so that it'll be the same no matter what. Now, I think I'm going to put Frederica on the side where the all the noise is because she's the more damaged track now and that is going to help a lot because you know the ear is going to hear the background noise and go oh she sounds weird against that because there's so much background noise and forgive the damage to the track itself somewhat it's one way you can just fake up something that then tricks the ear and I may even do something like still put a clock in the room so it's clear that they're still indoors um just to to and put that over on the other side to to further offset the wait to further offset the two uh where did the fine to further offset the the sound to to put the the ear that much more off balance so it's it's compensating and therefore has to you know what a bit <coughs> one of these clocks would work Yeah, something like that. It needs a high pass filter also. And then it'll be like way over here. All right, now that I've worked on all of my background stuff to get the, all of the noise. <laughs> to, to, and now you can see that it's like, okay, if I had just totally clean files with really good recordings, I wouldn't have to do all the compensating to make up for it just to make it sound reasonable. And it's true. I mean, that really makes a huge difference. No, I didn't do that. It really makes a huge difference if you don't have to do that. And that's one reason to always work on, on you know, getting the cleanest sound to start with so you don't have to think about it. Yeah, it can be it can be excessive. It really can. Now I can start working with the voices a little bit. Let's see. Um I don't want that first take. It was a little loud, I think. And there was a rustle of paper in it, and that gives me some blank space to paste. Okay, so we'll bring her back. I'm so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. I'm so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. That sounds a little better. I'm so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. It's so kind of you to have me, Frederica. I trust Henry and Astor are well. It is so kind of you to have me, Frederica. I trust Henry and Astor are well. Lines 10 and... Oops. Perfect little angels. Growing so fast. More sugar. And now I also have to make sure that I'm not completely overriding the voices with all the extra sound, you know, because it's, 
it's you know it, when when the the voices are have to be so heavily worked on to clean up it's easily easy for them to end up getting a little bit overwhelmed thank you but i fear i should refrain thank you but i fear i should refrain thank you but i fear i should refrain um I'm definitely going to take this down some. I want it there, but only as a the slightest presence. So I think I'm going to minus it out a lot. It's it's overwhelming. Thank you, but I fear I should refrain. And same with both of these. We've got... Now, the lowest it can go is minus 50, and you can actually still hear it at minus 50. Oh, here we go. On average, how many hours of work, recording, editing, mix goes into one show? The way I've always added it up, it comes to about an hour per finished minute of show, and that's like through everything, writing all the way to the end. But a lot of people say that that is a very low estimate. A lot of people say that that's, you know, but, but it's an easy one to remember. For me, at least, it's about an hour per minute. I mean, by comparison, doing a straight audio book without any of this stuff tends to run about three hours per hour. So three minutes per minute. <laughs> uh, Yargian, I'm sure you probably answered this before, but do you send out the whole script to the actors or just their parts? Oh, no, no. I, I send them the whole script, but I actually ask them to do many different takes. And the reason for that is, I mean, unless I micromanage and, you know, actually tell them exactly how I want each line to, te to sound, which doesn't leave any room for, for them to do some experimenting. What I do is I tell most people to give me three takes to each line and try it a little different each time so that I can pick the one that sounds the way I want the character to sound and what fits the scene the best, etc. So that, you know, that, that ultimately in the, it's in the hands of the director to, to put the scene together. I, I much prefer where they do send me three different takes than if they just repeat it three times exactly as is, because it really does make a difference, you know, because sometimes you've got a character where you really want them to sound a little hesitant or a little ominous or a little something and and they're not sure how much to do well you, you know take three takes do one a little bit one a little bit more and one way over the top and let me decide and and that really does make a difference and it helps a lot actually for for the ultimate final process to have the options so that you know it sounds a little different or the in, Flexion is a little different, like this line here, you Thank know. Thank you, but I fear I should refrain. You know, I mean, that, you know, even that line could, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't think I should have any sugar or whatever. It should, could be any number of ways, depending on whether it's like, oh, you know, I don't want your sugar or, oh, I'm trying to lose weight or, you know, whatever the reasoning is in her, in the character's head. Um, but that way, it's it's up to me to decide which inflections I like. And sometimes it also, you know, I can choose, you know, from a couple of different, I, I'll mix and match sometimes because sometimes I want it to... <coughs> little angels growing so fast. <coughs> Sorry. Um, sometimes it's, it's also got to do with... Uh, Perfect little angel. You want several takes also because... Uh, if there's something wrong with one, like the paper rustling or something, then I have another one to resort to. Are you still concerned? See, I like that. The, her first sort of very plummy take on these, in the, most of these. About? Ab if it sounds right, I'll just use the first one. Usually I'll listen to them all, but sometimes... I just don't, I, I just, it's just right. Or it's not really something where it needs to have a variety. 
I mean, really, three takes is generally what I consider to be best. I'll tell them, you know, and I'll also tell people a lot of times, if the phrasing or something is awkward, if you're having trouble with, you know, if, if you feel it would flow better with a slightly different word, do it my way a couple times, then do it the way you think it feels better, and I'll choose. And that way, you know, they can try something that might be a little bit more comfortable, you know. My dear, it is only the two of us. You spoke so frankly before. Pray keep me in your confidence. If you need to speak, speak. <laughs> and yeah so I mean it's all in I mean part of it is part of what's going to get a good performance out of the actors is writing an effective script so that the, they know what they're getting into I mean one of the things I got in this um, one of the reasons I'm replacing the professor's voice is because the the original lines I got were just wrong. They, they I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know it till I just listened to it. And I was like, and I couldn't, you know, reach the original actor. And I was like, okay, he didn't really pay attention to anything I gave him about the character, and it was just wrong. And so I had to get something that fit because it's, sometimes it's very important that a character be a certain way. And, and, and when it's written that way and the, and the actor doesn't get it, you have to get it right. I don't know if I made that sense. Uh, I feel very foolish. I feel very foolish. I feel very foolish. Actually, like that take. It is always difficult the first time it occurs. Yeah, there was a thump in there. It is always difficult the first time it occurs. It is always difficult the first time it occurs. Hmm, I may still take it and just try to get the thump out. Difficult the first time. Yeah, it can be really awkward and... Let's see here. Bust. Bust. To tie. Hmm. The first time it. It's <laughs> the first time it occurs. Might be enough to make that not sound too bad with the background sound. It is always difficult the first time it occurs. Difficult. Yes. It's difficult. Let me see what I can do here. Because this sort of then... Difficult. It is always difficult the first time it occurs. <laughs> that sounds a little better because it sort of went out. It was like the voice was gone there for a bit. And that's not too bad. It is bad. always difficult the first time it occurs. And I could do that here too. First time it occurs. The first time. First but it doesn't quite sound the same there. I think I'm going to have to just, well, let's see. How does this one sound? Sometimes, yeah, it, it well, it is. And, you know, trying to it figure out. It is always difficult the first time it occurs. Let's see if I can work with that part. Um, blank out this trying to replace, trying to fix lines. It's like, I like the inflection on this one, but I'm trying to fix this lump. The first time it occurs. The first time it... 
first time. Time it. Yeah, I think that'll work. Part of it's just seeing where the patterns are. Difficult the first time it occurs. Still something wrong with that. Uh, to cut. To. To. The first time it occurs. I know I'm being overly it's difficult the first time it occurred. Not right. I don't need that. Difficult the first time it occurs. Eh, that's as good as it's gonna get. I mean, no matter what, the line is kind of messed up, but at least this way I can have a... It is always difficult the first time it occurs. First. 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 <laughs> See, this is the friend who was telling her about, you know... First. About how men are, you know, gonna have affairs and things, and therefore you just put up with it. And that's why... <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me, which is what prompted her to show up on Jane's doorstep in the first place. So, you know, now she's like, wait a minute, first? You mean this happens over and over again? Well, thank you. I, you know, it's, it, it is tricky, but it's another thing. It is thing. always difficult. The first time it occurs. Oh, now I hear the fourth take, which I like better. Ha ah, ha ha ha, Julie. It's a little bit more, that is a little bit more, um, kind of pointedly cruel, almost, right there, that this take here, where she says, you know, it's always terrible, the first time, you know, and, and then, and then Hermione's like, the first? You know, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, that's why you always listen. I, I hit three times and thought she'd finished, but of course there's a fourth take. Ah, yeah. Men stray. It is in their nature to, to be inconstant. <laughs> okay, we're gonna I'm gonna mute her so I can listen to the other takes on this one. But I like having the background Men noise. I like having the background noise in there because it helps me ignore. It is in their nature to be inconstant. Men stray. It's in their nature to be inconstant. Uh, I think I'll take that one. And but volume it well up here. Because otherwise she just sounds like she's on a phone line, which is one of the problems with when something is too far high past, is that it does start to sound like it's on a phone line. And, and that just doesn't fit with a scene. That's what I'm trying to compensate for with all the other stuff. And then this Only while they are endeavoring to move us. Only while they're endeavoring to move us. Only while they're endeavoring to move us. Nope. And... We'll hear the whole scene in just a And yet they call us the movable ones. And yet they call us the movable ones. See, and she's got a ton of background sound, too. I mean, this is... And yet they call us the movable ones. Again, why I'm compensating with so much background noise on these one on this scene. But, you know, it's good to know how to <coughs> get past some of this. This would have been done long since if I just had two clean tracks with good voices. And, you know. But I discovered my fears were unfounded. The expenses were... But I discovered my fears were unfounded. The expenses were... But I discovered my fears were unfounded. The expenses were... 
Uh, I think I like the first one. I mean, this this friend is kind of catty, obviously. She kind of wants bad things. Page five. Whoops. <laughs> Your expenses were page five? Oh, my God. Yes. I'll just take that yeah. one. Because that's kind of what I want. I'll time everything up. I mean, close up the timing and stuff on, on that in just a second. For the care of an elderly nanny. For the care of an elderly nanny. For the care of an elderly nanny. See, now that's a legit reason that somebody might be paying rent on a... a, a that a that a gentleman might be paying rent on a place, you know, is to, to take care of an old retainer. That is very kind of him. But surely she would be better served if he settled a lump sum on her. <laughs> As opposed to, you know, this is how, you know, <laughs> so Hermione is, is doing her part to cover up the problem, you know, to cover up the issue. I would never ask, but she is quite incapable. And I doubt that anyone asked to safeguard money for such a one would be kind. You know what? I really need to. Okay, I need to take this sound and get it out of there it is too too much um that's the t let me get down here oh shut up One, on a nine of its own i'm still gonna clean it just to make sure that there's no excessive thing nothing special in it in the track that I can see I mean it's only two seconds long so it's not like there's much to it and voluming it up is like almost 50 so you know there's really next to nothing there um, so I'm just gonna take that I'm gonna make it longer so it's over five seconds I'm gonna take the noise profile and then I'm going to go clean Hermione's track. Because once I get her on her own, I hear that this this noise and it's driving me crazy. And hopefully that will help a little bit. I would never ask, but she is quite incapable. And I doubt that anyone asked to safeguard money for such a one would be kind. See, I can still hear it, and you can hear sort of a worm. I would never worm ask, but she sound. is quite incapable. And I doubt that anyone asked to safeguard money for such a one would be kind. I would never ask, but she is quite incapable, and, and I doubt that anyone asked to safeguard money for such a one would be kind. I think I'll just take the first one. When you start to overprocess, you'll start to hear certain kinds of noises. One of them is sort of a war, war, war noise. <clears throat> oh yes, no. I, I, editing, you know, something like this is so much better than a live interview. And I mean, somebody was asking me because I've just started my "From the Narrator's Mouth" podcast, where I ask narrators to write up something that I will read about what they liked about their book, and then I'll play their sample. And there's various reasons for it, but. People are like, well, why don't you just let the narrator talk about it? And I'm like, well, that's exactly why. Because I wanted something written so that for the most part of the show, it's my voice and it's, you know, scripted. You know, rather than having somebody sit there and blah, 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 like and blah, and um, and, and I, because I'm just the same way. I, I never edit the openings to Atomic Julie because of all the ums and stuff, you know, and I've been doing this for ages. You can hear me here with all my ums and coughs and things. But, you know, I want it scripted and I want it, for the most part, in my voice for that. And and I'm doing it in a British accent because it sounds far more classy. <laughs> I know, I know, it's terrible. No, it, it actually sounds, it sounds rather posh and also because my, my British accent isn't too bad and especially when I'm scripted. It is a huge difference between doing an accent off the cuff while talking and at this and doing it to a script there really is um, I've always personally worked hard to be able to do it off the cuff 
because I've almost always cultivated accents for the purpose of role playing games and renaissance fairs and you know live events where you can't speak to a script all the time but the uh, the main reason for me doing most of the podcast in the voice of Beatrice Pendergast one of my pseudonyms on Audible is the fact that if I do my voice and then do my book and then do my voice and then do a book under one of my other pseudonyms that does like the the raunchy romances you know it all sounds like me at least with Beatrice Pendergast they don't all sound like me <laughs> I'm sure it makes perfect sense but it's it's I mean the pseudonyms aren't so much because I'm embarrassed by having done sort of you know, smutty romances. It's got more to do with a sorting thing. Because, you know, some people don't want this or they do want that. And if you can look up this this vo- this name and get all the same thing, that helps. Anyway, uh, last line. Ah, all is well then. I had had some notion to inform you of a service you might wish to look into, should you ever find yourself concerned again. I'll just use that. And this is, oddly enough, another hint toward the the clockworks, but we don't know that really. I mean, it's just it's just a hint that that they they have more uses on purpose. Okay, let's see if I can get all the voice, all the voices all synced up right. I'm so pleased you were able to come to tea, Hermione. It's so kind of you to have me, Frederica. I trust Henry and Astor are well. Perfect little angels. Growing so fast. More sugar. Thank you, but I fear I should refrain. Let's see, I want to tighten this just a skirt. But actually, no, I don't, because I want to add a little space there, actually. Here I should refrain. Are you still concerned? About? My dear, it is only the two of us. You spoke so frankly. Bring that up a bit, and this ending part. My dear, it is only the two of us. You spoke so frankly before. Pray keep me in your confidence. If you need to speak, speak. I feel very foolish. It is always difficult. The first time it occurs. First? Men stray. (coughs) It's in their nature to be inconstant. I'm going to tighten this line up a bit. And bring some of this volume up. Difficult. The first time it occurs. First? Men stray. It's in their nature to be inconstant. There's a little noise here I'm going to take out. It's in their nature to be inconstant. And yet they call us the movable ones. Only. And yet they call us the movable ones. Only while they're endeavouring. Call us the movable ones. Only while they're endeavouring to move us. But, I discovered... And yet they call us the movable ones. Only while they're endeavouring to move us. But, I discovered my fears were unfounded. Actually... (coughs) They're endeavouring to move us. But I discovered my fears were unfounded. The expenses were... Yes? For the care of an elderly nanny. That is very kind of... The care of an elderly nanny. That is very kind of him. But surely she would be better served if he settled a lump sum on her. I would never ask, but she is quite incapable. And I doubt that anyone asked to safeguard money for such a one would be kind. Okay. There's a noise. Capable. Definite. 
sounds like an airplane taking off. Quite incapable. And I doubt that any... I would never ask, but she is quite incapable. And I doubt that anyone asked to safeguard money for such a one would be kind. Ah, all is well then. I had had some notion to inform you of a service you might wish to look into, should you ever find yourself concerned again. Oh, that's just a breath. I'm going to just take that out. Is quite incapable. Eh, this is a problem. There's a lot of noise right here. But it's part also of the end of the L. Oops, no, I don't want to actually do that. I want to blank it. And then I'm going to fade it out. It's incapable. And I doubt that anyone asked to Hmm. Well, I need more clock. The clock just stopped halfway through the night, halfway through the scene. Um, and maybe I will put a clock chime right there. Just to deal with that. Now, when extending a clock, you can't do it in the same way as when you're extending a, just a background track that, that has no rhythm to it. Unfortunately, clocks are a little more tricky. Actually, wait, let's do this. You have to bring it, you have to overlap it and get the timing right. Or else you'll get a sort of a jog in the middle of the clock track and it doesn't work. So, let's see. Now you can see that there's a larger and a smaller tick and you have to make sure those get lined up as well. Only while they're endeavoring. So if you get the clock track set up right, you shouldn't hear the difference. Uh, oh, come on. Oh, you fool. The bull ones. Only while they're endeavoring to move. There. And then usually I'll blank out those and then, uh, of course, to put them together, I have to bring them back to center but it's better to do it than have them get messed up later and make it sound like your clock jumped around or something silly and then pull it back all the way over here not a hundred percent never a hundred percent then I have a clock for the whole scene and I might put something like a clock chime here or just to come because I could go back and get another version of the line. I would never ask, but she is quite incapable. And I doubt that anyone asked to safeguard money for such a one would be kind. Ah, all is well then. I had had some notion to inform you of a service you might wish to look into. Should you ever find yourself concerned again? Which, of course, implies that if wives are hiring valets, they might be the ones getting them to kill the men. <laughs> I, lo a long shot that people might take that, but, you know, always possible. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the rest of this, this sound. I think it actually works now that the clock is there, because that helps with interfering, because... You can see why I work hard to get some s different sound on each side so that the ear is kind of constantly compensating for one or the other and thus doesn't hear quite as many of the flaws in the voices. Um, and of course, the other thing I'm going to do is take the voices and go ahead and do my room tone on them. So first I'm going, oops, why doesn't it stay selected? That's stupid. <coughs> Do 
do my room machine and my and my low pass filter. Now let's see how it sounds all together. Yeah, I mean if you if you listen to them just the two of them, uh, to which I have to actually go in here and turn off uh, my this to go to multi-track so that I can just stop it so that I can just play the two of them you know they sound kind of you know pleased you are able to come to tea Hermione it's so kind of you to have me Frederica I trust Henry and Astor are well perfect little angels I mean they kind of sound like they're half in a bucket half you know on a telephone but when you put everything else in there... I'm so pleased you are able to come to tea, Hermione. It's so kind of you to have me, Frederica. I trust Henry and Astor are well. Perfect little angels. Growing so fast. More sugar? Thank you, but I fear I should refrain. Are you still concerned? About? My dear, it is only the two of us. You spoke so frankly before. Pray keep me in your confidence. If you need to speak, speak. I feel very foolish. It is always difficult. The first time it occurs. First? Men stray. It's in their nature to be inconstant. And yet they call us the movable ones. Only while they're endeavouring to move us. But I discovered my fears were unfounded. The expenses were... Yes? For the care of an elderly nanny. That is very kind of him. But surely she would be better served if he settled a lump sum on her. I would never ask, but she is quite incapable. And I doubt that anyone asked to safeguard money for such a one would be kind. Ah... All is well, then. I had had some notion to inform you of a service you might wish to look into, should you ever find yourself concerned again. See, it's, you know, trying to spin gold out of straw. Sometimes you get, you know, you don't even get straw, you just get turds. But at least this is what I can work with. <laughs> I can, you know, do a certain amount of compensating for all of that there. And uh, I'm sure there are other things that could be done, you know, but y you can't fix certain things, you know. Yeah, that's the idea is that she might be suggesting, oh, well, you know, I mean, for instance, you know, Lord Bimberton, before he got his close shave, mentioned that his wife hired that valet or valet. So maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe, um, it was actually a way to get rid of her husband, which, you know, I mean, divorce was absolutely unthinkable and most marriages were arranged for, money slash business slash social class purposes and not remotely on account of any sort of liking let alone love so the idea of a way to to get your husband murdered and blame the missing valet was is actually kind of kind of a creepy conspiracy theory oh, better to be inconstant than incontinent oh, i don't know that's what servants are for uh, in the second one. Anyway, so, and then I can save this, mix it, copy it, unmix it, and close it, and paste the track in here, even though the chances are, uh, I'm going to mark this one, because I think I'm going to move it, or, or, you know, yeah, swap it to another place in the, in the episode. I don't think it belongs here. And I do have a... I can move the professor scene here. I swap them completely. But um, not right now. So I'm just going to leave it here for now. And we'll see how it flows later if I swap the scenes. 
So, yeah, I mean, the, the, that's the, well, the, the other thing is, is, uh, I mean, obviously that, that's also dangerous because, uh, the, you know, even asking for that puts you in somebody's power, whoever made the, the clockwork. And so that's not the best idea, but, and, and who knows who's, who's, programming essentially who's 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 pulling the cogs or whatever it is <laughs> so it should be interesting to find out um and we're gonna wrap that up for today at least we got one scene done and you can see again as usual as i point out you know starting with reasonably clean files makes such a huge difference on how quickly things go together that's one of the reasons for being picky as a director, producer, etc. is, you know, when you're listening to actors, you're not just listening to their voice, you're listening to their sound quality as well. Because sound quality can make a huge difference no matter what. So thank you all for coming tonight and and we are one step closer to a new episode hopefully tomorrow because of the time difference i might have the professor's lines in time to put together to fix episode two and get it all done and out thank you thank you i'm glad i'm glad i'm able to show some of this stuff i mean and and keep in mind that i'm sure people with an actual like you know, technical background might have completely different things to say. This is all the stuff I've just like figured out by, you know, dicking around with the files and, and, you know, and looking up a few things here and there, there may be programs that could fix that. But from what I've heard from people with technical backgrounds, you know, really you, you can't always fix things. You just can't. And so being able to come up with the ways to compensate is equally as valid as trying to use a better program or something. So, so I am still fabulous. <laughs> I do try. And that's one thing I've always been good at is putting things into terms that most people can understand. I mean, I've had my turn of being... I mean, working, talking to somebody who is a perfectly lovely person, but is very technical on something and is like, and the blah, 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 and the, some of the H and the Hertz and the blah, and I'm like, Grrr. I'm like, it all sounds to me like the parents in Charlie Brown, mwah, 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 mwah. you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, I can express it in ways that if not technically absolutely accurate are at least memorable and that is equally as important you know if i say this needs to be bigger than this or this number the higher it goes the more you know then then that might stick with you like just like when i say that room tone is like the frosting on a cake i mean that is an image that can stick and people yeah, well, or they try and they think they're being clear <coughs> and they don't understand why your eyes are glazing over. And that is, you know, or they can't do it in a way without explaining 500 other things first that they think you need to know whether you do or not. Yeah, that too. You know, and... So yeah, at least I'm able to cut through all that crap and make it pretty clear and, uh, and make it a little bit fun, hopefully too. Oh, I was, um, <laughs> I, I, yesterday, as I said, I finally managed to get the game to run. I mean, there's still errors and things, but I'm not sure why, but I've got to look at, it's still in the variables. Ugh, this is the tricky part is I know what I want it to do and I know how it should work because I do know at least a little bit about the structure of computer programs, but uh, it's getting the language correct is difficult. And uh, I mean, it's gonna be a super simple, cheesy old program to start with, but <laughs> on an acoustics forum and ask a simple question, uh, 
Well, you know, I mean, any category you go into, when you get into the the people who think they're the intelligentsia for that genre or whatever it is, a lot of times they will start to be like, oh, well, you just don't understand. Mm. You know, there's always people who are nice and want to help, but a lot of times they're not the ones hanging out in those forums because they get the same reactions from the douchebags. But, I mean, shoot, you know, people talk about, like, how gaming and um, computer stuff and comic books, how in, the, you know, with Gamergate and all the all the, the basement dwellers who are like, ooh, there's girls in our stuff. And I'm like, oh, oh, you come talk to me about that little boy because I was reading comic books before you were a sperm, so you can shut your mouth, you know? <laughs> and, but, uh, well, thank you. I mean, that's the thing is I try really hard to include everybody and I've always been very much about including and getting people interested and keeping them moving in doing things. You know, I mean, if somebody wants to act, I'll find them a part. If they're recording shit, I'll put them on the radio. You know, they'll be a radio announcer or a TV announcer or on a phone. You know, I'll find them something that suits their sound quality as well. Uh, well, yeah, and you get a lot of that professional snobbery from a lot of things. Um, <laughs> Acoustics Forum creates cacophony. Okay. <laughs> Goodness gracious, I need to blow my nose or something. Um, yeah. Well, you know, and and so many times... I mean, it's, it's, the, the sad part is, I mean, honestly, here in America, at least, we've created this idea that, um, that if, if I teach you how to do that, you'll never, I'll never, ever make a living at it. Or if I tell you my ideas, you'll steal them. Or if, you know, and it's, it's just, it's no way to live. And it's. It's such a pain in the ass. I mean, honestly, I could do this forever. And how many people would actually, how many people, if I, if I had a hundred people watch the show, how many of them, or, or participate here, how many would actually go out and make an, an entire show? You know, how much of that is actually going to turn into competition? I mean, a few people might, they might make one and then, you know, and one out of a hundred or three out of a hundred or something will actually go ahead and turn into another show. And by the time they're, they've made enough episodes, you know, it's not competition because we've got lots of listeners. I mean, you think about it. It's just not, it's not like that sort of thing. I don't know. It, it makes sense to me. And, and, you know, there's, Thanks. <laughs> you know, and, and, and my stuff, some of it I just made up, some of it I just figured out, some of it I found somewhere, and some of it's probably bullshit, you know, but it seems to work, and so I'll pass it on as best as I can. <laughs> and I've, you know, always been the idea, yeah, no, you don't have all my secrets, not until you have my cornbread recipe. But <laughs> you could have my cornbread recipe. I now I'm just making that up. But I do have a fudge recipe that you no. Know, um, but the thing is, it, it's I mean it when I I've done. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I I I try and help. You know, it's also it's good karma. I mean, whether you believe in technical karma or not, you sit there and go. You know, I put this out there and maybe someday one of you guys who's been working on this stuff comes back and helps me put together some shows. Uh, that could happen. It could not happen. But it's, you know, it's like, why the hell not? I mean, it entertains me at the same time. I like doing this. 
So, and it keeps me moving forward on this project when probably I just would have slept all these hours <laughs> during the winter normally because winter is really hard on me. Having a time and a place to do something is actually very helpful. But, um, yeah, you know, and, and I've been really super lucky from time to time finding this kind of help myself. Um, 